Hello students, welcome to the lecture on supply chain management and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand petroleum supply chain network, discuss about supply chain management practices, understand petroleum supply chain risk, explain supply chain link in the petroleum industry. Discuss about evolution of supply chain information technology. Let's start with the concept of supply chain management. Supply chain management in the petroleum industry contains various challenges specifically in the logistic area that are not present in most other industries. These logistical challenges are a major influence on the cost of the oil and its derivatives. However, opportunities for cost saving in logistics still do exist. The petroleum retailing industry in Asia and Middle East faces significant challenges. With low product differentiation, lack of customer loyalty, coupled with intense competition due to deregulation as in India, the various players will try to gain share from each other. This will exert a downward pressure on margins and force players to adopt a new and innovative strategies. India has deregulated the pricing mechanism for retail petroleum enabling new players to enter the market which was once a feat a dom of the public sector. In growth markets, the major imperative should be to increase profitable revenues and market share growth. The petroleum retailers will need to develop differentiated value propositions to improve revenues and their bottom lines by adopting a customer-focused approach and build strong brand equity. To drive revenues and margins, the retailers will have to attract new customers or increase share of their existing customers' wallet. The latter can be achieved by offering non-fuel products and services. Non-fuel products which offer higher margins compared to petroleum products enable companies to sustain themselves, especially during times when oil prices are high. Let us now discuss the petroleum supply chain network. Supply chain manager frequently come across location and allocation problems at the design phase of a supply chain that involves determining the number of warehouses and assigning retail allocation. It appears imperative to treat the location and allocation decisions simultaneously. The location decision involves a substantial investment since it cannot be changed frequently. Therefore, it has a long-term implication. The warehouse location acts as a prelude to the overall process of supply chain design with a far-reaching effect on the performance of the logistic and distribution system. On the other hand, the allocation decision is more dynamic in nature as these assignments need to be reviewed and change from time to time as the supply chain grows. One major problem associated with the petroleum industry is a high level of uncertainty or risk from exploration, production to tight transportation and supply or delivery process. Risk management involves identifying the supply chain risk events, assessing the probabilities and the severity of impacts, prioritizing the risk event, and developing actions for mitigating the risk as well as a course of action to consider in reducing the risk. The petroleum industry supply chain is like the supply chain of any other industry composed of intricate entities that extend from the oil fields to the gasoline station. The upstream petroleum supply chain has always been considered complex compared to other process industries such as pharmaceuticals. Evolution of Supply Chain Management The SCM has its roots in the evolutionary path followed through materials management and physical distribution after the Second World War, functional logistic, different managers for each functions and integrated logistic, one manager for all functions. Theoretically, development of SCM has different stages. Four stages of development, cost control, profit centers orientation, recognizing the positive impact on sales, view of supply chain as key to product differentiation and as a principal strategic advantage. The evolution of supply chain into three phases. Functional management functions such as purchasing, shipping and distribution each manner separately. Internal integration, the management of such supply chain function of a single facility is identified and becomes a responsibility of a single individual. External integration, the management of supply chain functions throughout the chain. Industrial application of supply chain pioneered the concept of 
three distinct entities. The phrase supply chain is always used to describe the logistic activities. The distinction between the petroleum industry supply chains from traditional supply chain is that there are intermediate markets where crude and oil products can't be bought or sold between upstream crude oil production and final retail delivery at service station and other end user. The petroleum industry activities are divided into three distinct entities. The upstream, midstream and downstream supply chain. The upstream supply chain activities consist of various operations such as exploration, which involves a seismic, a geophysical and geological studies, while production operation involves drilling, production, facility engineering and reservoir. Historically, the upstream sector has remarkable influence on the operation of the overall supply chain since it has the ability to push large quantities of crude oil through the chain. Historically, all of the international oil companies, IOCs, are vertically integrated since they are involved in more than one petroleum operation, supplying its own crude to the company-owned refinery and selling the petroleum products to its own distribution channels. Risk management. Since risk has become an intricate and fundamental element that is encountered in everyday operation by supply chain organization, firms' initial responsibility is to understand the risk and ultimately design solutions to mitigate the impact of the risk. Adoption of appropriate risk management techniques would enable risk managers to transform potential liabilities into competitive advantages. Risk management involves identifying the supply chain risk events, assessing the probabilities and the severity of impacts, prioritizing the risk even and developing actions for mitigating the risk. It also involves a course of action to consider in reducing the risk. Risk management involves such options as transferring it to or sharing it with other parties, accepting it as it is or avoiding the risk. Many studies exist in international literatures that identify various risks in the petroleum supply chain, Petroleum supply chain risk categorization fall into source dependence, facility dependence, transit dependence, and structural risk, which includes natural disaster, political blackmail, terrorism, war, civil unrest, etc. As we move into deeper and more hostile waters, the energy industry is facing greater safety and performance challenges. Annually, delays to drilling operations related to BOP issues are rising and costing companies a great deal of non-productive time. Lloyd's Register Energy is in the business of improving the safety and performance of global offshore operators who are facing increasingly stringent regulations in their drilling operations. Our unique BOP risk model incorporates proven technology and expertise in drilling and risk management to deliver fast, accurate, logical information which can turn days of non-productive time into hours. Take a typical scenario where a rig has developed several simultaneous leaks. The combined nature of the leaks forces the rig operator to stop drilling operations and consider pulling the BOP stack. Once troubleshooting has been conducted and the root cause of the problem has been identified, it's time to make a serious and costly decision. Typically, Drilling operations have stopped while a manual risk assessment is performed. Information is shared via teleconferences and on-site meetings between the on-site drilling manager, his staff and many onshore SMEs who collaborate to determine the correct course of action. This process can be further delayed when teams are dispersed across datelines or issues occur outside of typical business hours. Compare this approach to that of using our BOP risk model when faced with the same scenario. The BOP risk model's interface risk spectrum is simple and intuitive. Upon input of data, the system provides a color-coded indication of each function and system status, as well as the overall BOP status. Within minutes, you have a clear understanding of the severity of the issue. The BOP risk model helps you make decisions with confidence that all systems have been reviewed, the information is objective and specific to your BOP, and fully compliant with local regulations, specifications, and company guidelines. You have immediate access to schematics with effective circuits highlighted, 
and associated logic block diagrams for risk assessment and presentation to regulatory bodies. The BOP risk model can ultimately turn days of NPT into hours. Application to Petroleum Supply Chain Design While analyzing the current distribution system, it became evident that catering to distant and newer gas station location through a fewer depots result in longer lead time uncertainties and loss sales. Looking at the tremendous growth in retail volumes over the past few years as well as the potential to grow in the coming years, it was felt that a larger number of inventory holding and forwarding points depots would be necessary to serve the interior regions of the Sultani. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the supply chain management practices. Supply chain management and logistics are still in the embryonic stage in India. The current lulled economy is forcing many industries to examine their costs and cut it down in size. Today, excellent logistic management has become essential for success of companies. Logistic function includes the total flow of material from the acquisition of raw materials to delivery of finished products to the ultimate user. Successful supply chain management is extremely complex because a large number of players with varying interests or objectives are involved. Though the supply chain of each company has its own unique features, the following general principles help in management of supply chains. Begin with the customer. Manage a logistic asset, organize customer management, integrate sales and operation planning. A significant new trend has been evolving in logistic management in the last decade, one that involves the collaboration of all participants in the supply chain in order to reduce the cost of total logistic system. It has been referred to as supply chain management, logistic, partnership or inter-corporate logistic management. In traditional logistic total cost concept model, companies work to manage logistic as an entity and to lower the total logistic cost to the organization. The concept of quick to respond gained broad favor as companies in all parts of supply chain developed an appreciation of its potent benefits. Quick response involves the integration of the supply chain effectively linking retailers, suppliers, manufacturers, distributors and carriers in close communications and integrated decision making. A key element of quick response includes point of usage data capture, HEM level management, rapid communication, partnership. Supply chain management strategy involves determination of what performance criteria the logistics system must maintain more specifically, the service levels and cost objectives the logistics system must meet. Because cost and service normally involve a trade-off, a company must consciously consider that trade-off and determine the desired supply chain performance. This process involves consideration of the company's strategic objective, its specific marketing strategy and customer service requirements and its competitor cost service position. I've been working in the industry for over 30 years, serving petroleum companies and oil field services companies, and today I'm a consultant with EAG Services. Today I'd like to talk to you about how we respond to some unusual conditions that are going on in our industry today and the fact that today we have technology that can help us respond to this in a way that is more effective perhaps than we've ever seen in the, in the past. So the things I want to talk to you about a little bit is the level of uncertainty we're facing in the business, the way we can try to cope with that uncertainty, and how we can use that to drive real benefits and improved outcomes in our businesses. I've been in the business, as I said, over 35 years, and I've never seen a time when we've seen so much uncertainty in the petroleum industry. Commodity prices spiked up and then crashed back down, and no one's quite sure where they'll go next. The availability of transportation to move our product to market has, has grown critical in North America, and many people find themselves losing market share simply because they can't access pipeline capacity. Today, the financing of our operations is in question as it's never been before. The financial crisis and the recession have added to that. We have to be prepared to move when the money is available and drill when we can and be prepared to dial back when the money isn't available anymore. And strangely enough, what we've seen for the first time in several years is now a lack of availability of critical materials that we need to support drilling and operations. And the prices of commodity, particularly steel goods, have spiked up in the last few years in an unexpected way. 
All of this creates an air of uncertainty. If you know things are going to be bad, you can respond proactively to that. If you form an opinion that things are going to be good, you can form a re proactive response to that. But what do you do when you can't form a clear vision of the future? It causes you to question key relationships. For example, in the 1990s, we've worked with service companies to create vendor-managed inventories and other relationships like that. And today, in an era of uncertainty, we're not quite sure how well some of those things work because we're not sure what to respond to. Today, we believe that one of the best ways to respond to this level of uncertainty is to create what we're calling agility in our organizations, the ability to dial our organizations up or dial them back very, very quickly. And we do that through three concepts. Today, we have available to us web-based technology that provides procurement platforms that can do things that we only thought about a few years back. They're flexible and web-based. They can be accessed in the field, in the office, and can share information in a way that we've never really thought about doing in the past. By wrapping around those flexible business processes that allow us to respond to changing conditions and to dial our business up and back at will, we can empower that technology and bring it into our business. Finally, this technology allows us to involve people in a way we've never really involved them before. People between the drilling floor and the back office can dialogue with each other about data using these platforms in a way that's flexible and creative and allows them to respond to changing conditions. We wrap those things in two things. First of all, integration with our other systems, achieving a true procure-to-pay view of, of the world in terms of the way we manage the materials and the critical services that help us drill and produce product, and by implying organizational discipline, the will to actually make these things work. Today, the technology and what we know about business processes and our ability to train people allow us to do things that we really only thought about in the past. It gives us a whole new level of capability in our supply chain and our ability to management. We can now address complex issues that used to lay beyond the capability of what we used to call purchasing systems. We can deal with complex purchasing situations such as services and engineered products. We can create alternative processes that respond to emergency conditions. We can manage logistics much more effectively than we've ever managed it in the past and allow ourselves to expedite when necessary but avoid unnecessary expediting fields when it's not. We can then reach for capabilities that really allow us to empower our organization and reach for real improvements in our business results. We can implement vendor-managed inventory in a way that's clear and transparent and powerful so that both we and our vendor partners can see what's in inventory and make sure we've got the optimum amount of product to move to support our drilling and lifting operations. It's an exciting world, and it allows us to create agility that will allow us to respond to this unprecedented amount of uncertainty that we're seeing in the industry today. Let's know the meaning of petroleum supply chain risk. AHP application to the upstream petroleum supply chain risk entails three broad phases. Structuring the complex decision problem as a hierarchy, displaying the ultimate objective or the overall goal of risk management, the various risk factors and the alternative criteria of the decision maker. The structure of the hierarchy is organized by placing the objective at the first level, criteria second level and decision alternatives at the third level. The identified decision criteria risk are exploration and production, environmental and regulatory compliance, transportation, availability of oil resource, geopolitical and reputational risk. The alternative or preferred options of managing the risk specified at level 3 are accept and control the risk, terminate and forego activity, transfer or share risk. The prioritization process is accomplished by assigning number from a scale developed to represent the importance of the criteria. A mattress with pair-wise comparison with these attributes provides a means for calculation. The decision maker evaluates each criterion against all others and expresses a preference between each pair as equal, moderate, strong, very strong and extremely preferable to important. Aggregating the ways of the decision element to provide a set of ratings for the decision alternative. Finally, the sensitivity analysis option of the expert choice 
enables the decision maker to graphically explore to what extent the overall priorities are sensitive to changes in the relative importance or weight of each attribute or criteria. Supply chain planning. Planning for all organization includes both long term and short term to have better performance. Planning can be divided into strategic and short term. Literature on both other types is sufficient to have good idea on planning. An idea how to design a global strategy to have a comparative and competitive value added change. The global challenges in supply chain on the issues of implementation of SCM. It is also observed that if the margins are going down, look at the performance of supply chain. Industry and supply chain structure. The downstream petroleum supply chain can be categorized as a global supply driven structure with the main following factors. Suppliers of crude oil. As a natural resource, the crude oil is located in certain areas of the world that usually are far from the main consuming countries, mostly the OECD Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development members. An important part of the crude oil supply and reserve is concentrated in the hands of a cartel OPEC Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Refiners with plants located all over the world and clustered to final consumer. The main reason for this fact is the economies of scale of transporting crude oil in big super tankers versus transporting the final product in smaller lots and the strategic value of the refining assets. This latter fact makes governments prefer having some of the refinery operation in their territories. Consumers, as stated before, they are divided into small consumer, example car owners buying gasoline, and wholesale consumer, example power station using heavy oil, petrochemicals plants receiving feedstock. These factors are involved in the main activities that configure the downstream supply chain. Oil supply and trading. These activities deal with the procurement of raw materials and bulk sales of products in commodity markets. In the case of crude oils, for each of the available grades, it is necessary to access the price, quality, timing and distance to the refinery in order to decide the optimal acquisition. Additionally, the refiner has to carefully monitor the price risk and manage the inventory, supply chain challenges and opportunities. Due to the complexities and issues described, the downstream oil business as a whole faces a series of challenges that surface through different interviews with industry experts and are widely cited in the literature. In many of the geographical areas, field demand growth is weak. However, product trading has increased as a result of insufficient refining capacity in the main consuming areas. This creates a pressure on margins in regions with a deficit because finished products start flowing from the regions with a surplus. On the other hand, the situation creates a new markets in other countries for local refiners and opportunities for increased efficiency in the overall supply chain. The quality issues are becoming especially constraining as the new fuel specification demand more complex, processing and expensive investment in new equipment. These investments do not always provide an attractive return but are in many cases required to keep the refinery operation. For example, in the case of the US, the varying state by state standards have led to a boutique market. Nevertheless, the quality compliance complexity offers an opportunity for differentiation and even brand building around some of the chemical characteristics of the fuels. Supply chain link in the petroleum industry. The links represent the major supply chain links in the petroleum industry and the interface between companies and materials that flow through the supply chain. Exploration, production, refining, marketing, consumer. As long as all companies have needed a balance of vendors to keep their system continuously resupplied, there has been a supply chain. Within each stage, there are many operations. For example, exploration includes seismic, physical and geological operation, while production operation include drilling, reserver, production and facilities, engineering. Refining is a complex operation and its output is the input to marketing. Marketing includes the retail sale of gasoline, engine oil and other refined products. Each stage of the link can be a separate company or a unit of an integrated form. The common issue along the links in the petroleum industry supply chain is economics, weighing benefits versus costs along the chain. In exploration and production, most of the work and activities are repetitive. The companies drill a lot of petroleum wells every year. 
A drilling contractor is required and as many as 45 or more different services are required to drill and complete each well. In the petroleum industry, almost all significant and important operations are planned in advance. Thus, the whole process can be massaged and fine-toned into a high-performance money-making machine. The goal of supply chain management is to provide maximum customer service at the lowest possible cost. In the industry, supply chain link, exploration, operation, create value through seismic analysis and identifying prospects. Production operation become the customers that use the output of exploration. In like manner, refining is the customer of production while marketing is the customer of refining and the consumer of refined product such as gasoline is the ultimate customer. There is a need to ensure that each company or operator along the supply chain can respond quickly to the exact material needs of its customer, protect itself from problems with supplies and buffer its operation from the demand and supply uncertainty it faces. For petroleum companies, the profit margin can be greatly enhanced if the companies manage their purchasing dollars throughout the entire supply chain. One of the weaknesses of a supply chain is that each company is likely to act in its best interest to optimize its profit. The goal of satisfying the ultimate customer is easily lost and opportunities that could arise from some coordination of decision across stages of the supply chain could also be lost. Management Decision as defined earlier, supply chain management involves configuration, coordination and improvement. There are issues to be considered in each case. Configuration involves the following question. What product service bundle to produce? What portions of the bundle to produce in-house and what portion to purchase from others? Facility capacity, location of facilities. Improvement of the supply chain requires continuous evaluation and involves changing as required the configuration and or the approach to coordination in order to enhance the performance of the overall chain. It has been suggested that demand variability application in a supply chain is problematic but can be dampened by operating the supply chain more coherently by using information sharing and lead time reduction. Vertical Integration Recent developments highlight the need to manage a company's supply chain in an integrated and cohesive manner. These developments include the increased demand for better and faster customer service, globalization of the petroleum business, competition and the availability of information technology to facilitate information exchange. Therefore, integration and cohesiveness will reduce cost if it leads to a more efficient system. Evolution of Supply Chain Information Technology IT applications have been in use to improve the downstream supply chain for many years. Linear programming LP models have been in use in somewhat siloed fashion since the early 1960s. Process control and optimizers became popular in the 70s. Many oil companies did not embrace and utilize LPs until they were available on personal computer PCs in the late 1980s. The advent of enterprise resource planning ERP systems in the late 1980s or early 1990s shifted the focus of software application to cross enterprise increased profitability and process integration. Components of the downstream supply chain. Downstream business is divided into refining and distribution segments. It focuses more on the distribution segment. Since there is a lot of interplay between the two segments, a brief description of the refining business is also included. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Supply chain managers frequently come across location and allocation problems at the design phase of a supply chain that involves determining the number of warehouses and assigning retail allocation. The upstream petroleum supply chain has always been considered complex compared to other process industries such as pharmaceuticals. However, the logistic function is one of the areas that affects supply chain performance in the petroleum industry. Risk management involves such options as transferring it to or sharing it or with other parties accepting it as it is all, avoiding the risk. Many studies exist in international literature that identify various risks in the problem supply chain. The common issue along the links in the petroleum industry supply chain is economics, weighing benefits versus costs along the chain. Very few industries can benefit from maximizing supply chain efficiencies more than the petroleum companies. Refiners committed to streamlining and optimizing their supply chains have found rich opportunities as the supply chain typically represents 65 to 75 percent of the company's cost structure and is one of the last opportunities for material economic enhancement of such an enterprise.